Now, Sean, legendary story. We got to bring it up. You kept your, your uniform, your gear on for a full 25 hours after you won the cup. Was that a deer, a bet, on a whim? How, how did that all come to come to be? Okay, we've all seen a Christmas story, right? When the kid sticks his tongue on the pole because of a triple dog dare. <laughs> so we, we, we ended up having success, and then the locker room was just packed. So I went out on the ice with my wife and our friends. I called my grandpa just nice and you know, serene. I come back in, everyone's dressed, ready to go down to the chop house. Our buddy Bill ran it, and uh, I think it was Joseph, I can't remember who, said, just wear your stuff there. Just wear it there. So the equipment managers, my best friends, Smoke and Terry, tape on these little guards on my skates. And I go in thinking, ah, it'll be kind of fun to walk in with it on. And I was with Trey Anastasio, a good fun, friend of mine, not a good friend of mine, a real, real good friend. Um, and he goes, uh, Barry, Barry, look, who's just got his stuff on? And Barry Melrose, who I've done some charity work with, is a friend of mine. I go, he goes, that's nothing. We had a guy in Adirondack wear his stuff for 24 hours after we won. So, of course, it's like, here we go. <laughs> here, I, I knew it right away. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I don't think I'll ever graduate from 12 years old. And then, so I kept it on there. Then we went out for the night. And I remember laying in bed with my wife and, we, we were in Curtis Lecician's house and he had like a king size bed and she was as far over on that side as you could get. And I was over here and she's like, just take it off. You're disgusting. And I said, honey, trust me of anything I do in this career, people will remember this longer than anything else. And no shit. <laughs> There we go. And now when your name's uh, brought up, it, the guy wore his sweaty, <laughs> disgusting gear for over yeah. a day. It was so. I remember sitting at the Morrison Inn, this little bar up in Morrison, and taking the the you know where they pour soda and water out behind the bar, and just dousing my body. I was overheating. My scars were starting to scab over like green. I'm oh. like, Oof. what am I doing right now? <laughs> Did you take any Dixies walking around with the skates for so long with a couple cocktails in you? <laughs> uh, I never took a never took a digger, but I. Back when I played, I wore size nine and a quarter because everything had to be perfect for me just to be able to cross over, you know? So they were so tight. When I took them off, my feet literally looked like they were a couple of watermelons on the end of my yeah. legs. It was so gross. It was, <laughs> I was just disgusting. I she know was, we're switching subject big time here, but you're a big fish guy, the band. How many concerts have you been through? Uh, been to fish concerts? You know, probably half a dozen. My friend Brad Sands was the manager of the band and we got to meet them when they were out in Philadelphia and uh, just, I mean, incredible human beings. And so got to know them and seen them in a few different places and venues and yes, and that's kind of how we hit it off and just that we've actually stayed in would touch. You, uh, would you hit up the Shakedown Street at their concerts? Do you know what that is? I don't know what that is. That's where all the where the people who want drugs, they go meet, they call it Shakedown Street and they kind of just tap each other and then they exchange the drugs and I, I raised a VIP I, there. I mean, you look like the type of guy who likes <laughs> to have a good time, Sean. Also, I figured if you're going to fish concerts, you might be on the old shrooms or some shit. <laughs> well, well, right now I'm happy I answered. I didn't know what it was, and I hope you believe me. <laughs> yeah, no, I do. I do.